Afternoon. We are going to have an ASEAN uh, session here. Uh, actually, we call ASEAN knowledge. ASEAN, sorry, ASEAN regional knowledge uh, network. Uh, this uh, session will be. Uh, having a kind of presentation from some of the ASEAN countries. As you know, this morning, ASEAN countries is consisting of 10 different countries. But in terms of uh, forests, ASEAN countries have a uh, significant contribution for the global climate change. Uh, in our statistic by FAO, uh, ASEAN countries uh, comprising around one out of three different things, uh, group in the world, out of Brazil and also Congo Basin, as the one of the uh, earth. According to IUCN, 40% of the world's oxygen actually come from tropical countries. And ASEAN is one of the biggest regions as the tropical countries in the world. So I think it's uh, ASEAN experiences in forest and climate change will be very, very significant to be uh, uh, considered. This uh, afternoon, actually, we have uh, several colleagues from ASEAN countries, and we are here because also our uh, cooperation between Germans and ASEAN countries. So, before we starting with the presentation, let me uh, invite Mr. Thomas Hendricks. He is uh, uh, head of program ASEAN German program on response to climate change, GAPCC in Jakarta. Please.
So we appreciate very much the work and the structures already established within the ASEAN region. These structures could be key to speed up learning processes in the member states and to achieve results on the international level. And these structures include networks like the ARKN. We appreciate that within ARKN, ASEAN member states have shared information and experiences on forestry and successfully developed several common positions of World Plus in the UNFCC negotiations. All those achievements wouldn't have been possible without the successful coordination effort of the ARKN FCC. So we honestly congratulate you uh, for these achievements and for this effort. And it's a pleasure for me to announce that our ministry in Germany has just decided to continue the support through our FCC, our program, to ASEAN and to the IAC, at least until end of 2017. In this context, let me add that we would welcome partnerships with other organizations to broaden up the support of the regional level. So once more, on behalf of GRZ and the FCC, I would like to congratulate the organizers for this event. And I'm looking forward to a fruitful and enriching discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Heinrich. Ladies and gentlemen, our session will be in around uh, 90 minutes. So in this uh, afternoon, we have at least seven different uh, presenters. So from Indonesia, from uh, the Philippines, Ayala, uh, Jeremy Brockhead and Mr. Chun from Cambodia, uh, Ibu, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Phillips from Malaysia, Mr. Moyan from Vietnam, and Dr. Alistair Manbo from Indonesia. I like to invite first, for people known, she is uh, actually is the coordinator of ARKN, ASEAN Regional Knowledge Network for forest and climate change. She will give a kind of idea what, to address international, regional and national issues of Red Plus approaches and lessons learned from ARPM FCC. Uh, we know your time around five minutes, please. Uh, a good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me, uh, representing ASEAN Regional Knowledge Network on Forest and uh, Climate Change, to share uh, with you how uh, ASEAN address international, regional, and national issues related to forest and climate change. Uh, let me begin with uh, introducing, introducing ASEAN and ASEAN member states. ASEAN is political and economic organization of 10 countries located in South East Asia, formed in 1967. It covers a land area of 4.46 million square kilometers, about 3% of the total land area of Earth. It has population of about 600 million people about 8.8 percent of the world population in 2012 it combined nominal gdp has grown to more than 2.3 trillion us dollars if we were a single entity it would rank as the eighth largest economy in the world in terms of forest area collectively asia uh, own approximately 283.2 million hectares. Despite diversity in forest area, forest resources management histories, economic and political condition, the, re the region share many in common. For example, cultural value, biodiversity, richness dependency of local people to forest area in many countries, and vulnerability to climate change. In fact, this is one of historical background of the establishment of ARKN FCC. ARKN FCC was formed in 2000, 
8 upon the approval from ASEAN General Official in Forestry Meeting in 2008. The objective of uh, this Ayatani CC is supporting ASEAN decision making and implementation on forest and climate change. What is the approach of ARK and FCC in carrying out our tasks? ARK and FCC operates under ASOP guidance, complying with ASEAN principles including mutual respect and effective regional cooperation. Uh, through this network, experience, information, and lessons, including challenges relating to forest and climate change, especially Red Plus, are shared. And wherever possible, common issues are addressed regionally and as the basis of developing common position for negotiation. I just uh, continue what we are, we are doing it at the international level. Through this network, ASEAN has successfully developed common position and uh, we uh, successfully also uh, gain the support and recognition about our position and our interest. At the regional level, we work together in capacity building and also uh, through different support, we develop a guidance for developing reference emissions level and MRP system also develop a decision support tool on drivers or deforestation and uh, degradation. In a uh, in regional level, uh, we work uh, together under three main areas, policy, capacity building, and communication. Uh, what we, we learn from our uh, process, uh, first in mobilizing uh, resources, uh, we are trying to support, uh, we uh, mobilize support from various channels, multilateral, bilateral, and also national sources. One thing is uh, that very important and very relevant with this event is uh, inclusive process, full engagement of all ASEAN members, and also transparent processes in our effort at different level, international, regional, and national level. Thank you, Pa uh, Oli, and thank you. Thank you, Will. Uh, yes, very timely. Five minutes. Uh, sorry, I forget to introduce Bruno background. Although I believe that almost all of you uh, know well who Bruno is. Uh, Bruno, Dr. Noor Masrifatin, is uh, the director of Center for Standardization and Environment Ministry of Forestry, and she has engaged in climate change negotiations and has been the Red Plus lead negotiator of Indonesia and UNFCCC. Uh, she is currently the coordinator of ARKN and uh, the coordinator of Safeguards Information System of Indonesia. I think it's, uh, Gunnar is one of our best uh, colleagues on climate change issue and forest. The second speaker, I'd like to invite my colleague from Cambodia. Uh, there will be two speakers uh, today. One is Mr. Chun Rilax, is the Deputy Chief of Forest Carbon Credit and Climate Change Office, Forestry Administration, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Cambodia. He has seven years' experience involved with community based forest management, and he is currently one of the Cambodia Red Plus Safeguard Technical Team members. So, uh, the second speaker from Cambodia, or I don't know which one you are going to do first, that's uh, Jeremy Broadhead. He, he is a senior forestry and land use policy advisor for lowering emission in Asia forests only, with comprehensive experiences in Asia Pacific and Africa. His experience trains from project preparations and management to forestry policy analysis and linking climate change objective to forest management. So, because you are going to be both of you, so two minutes for Jeremy, three minutes for Mr. Chu. Please. <laughs> okay, good afternoon everyone. Very pleased to be here. I'll try and make this as uh, quick as possible. This is just to introduce 
the uh, draft ARK and FCC decision support tool on addressing, uh, assessing and addressing drivers of deforestation and degradation. Uh, this is um, a publication that uh, the, the USAID lead program has been supporting ARK and FCC to develop over the past year or so. And there have been um, a number of meetings that we've held uh, during which ARK and FCC focal points have provided the framework and the direction uh, in developing this tool. Uh, the LEAF program and the Climate Focus, the con consortium partner that I work for, for, has then been able to fill in the gaps. And we've had uh, several rounds of consultation. Um, at the moment, we're going through a testing phase. Uh, we've got Chundalux from Cambodia to talk about that, uh, this in the next session. Uh, we're also testing uh, the decision support tool at the uh, sub-national and national level in other countries in the region, uh, uh, as you can see on the, on the presentation. The idea of this is to, is to get um, some practical experience on implementing the tool. And it is quite important because addressing drivers of deforestation and degradation is certainly not an academic exercise. And although we've built this concentrated process, we realize it is, in some cases, more of a negotiation than a consultation. I can have the next slide, quickly. So, uh, an overview of the talk that um, uh, Chung will be uh, talking about the uh, implementation of in the next presentation. Uh, the first step is to gather information on drivers, select the drivers that you want to assess based on criteria that have been uh, developed in a participatory fashion, then designing policies and measures to address the drivers. So this is very much built into the uh, sort of standard grid process. It's basically trying to construct uh, a policy process around drivers. So in the past we've seen that there have been a lot of consultancy reports based on uh, remote sensing and GIS analyses in which consultants come out with some uh, recommendations for drivers to address. But this means to this decision support tool uh, aims to mobilize stakeholders in addressing those drivers because our experience in the region over the past, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years is if you don't mobilize stakeholders then nothing's going to happen. Uh, step four is implementing the, uh, the selected drivers and step five is monitoring the implementation. And that's it. Thank you very much. presentations will focus on the experience from the applying tool that Jeremy has mentioned. Okay. Uh, this is an overview about the driver of deforestation and depopulation in Cambodia. And you see that Cambodia has a high deforestation rate, but at the same time we have high forest cover. So in the principle, it is a very good place for testing the red plus mechanism. Effective national red plus strategy or effective red plus implementation unless you have to identify a clear driver of deforestation. And as you see in the slide, that um, uh, in principle, when we are developing the roadmap, we already identify some key driver of deforestation and, and forest degradation. It is cover both uh, driver inside forestry sector and outside forestry sectors. Okay, how uh, driver of deforestation and degradation has been identified in the Cambodia Red Plus roadmaps? Um, as experience, we have three steps that uh, this driver has been identified. Was there was a uh, first we do existing uh, background experience in Red Plus pilot implementation, and a lot of research has been done in the past. And after we uh, collect all these information and then um, we uh, conducted a uh, national and sub-national consultation whether the driver of deforestation it reflects to the, the real situation the ground or it reflects to the policy that we have in our countries and uh, after that um, it will be uh, after we uh, consulted with different stakeholders and also, uh, at the last day, we are, uh, set up a working group to compile the Cambodian National Red Plus Roadmap. So this is an experience that we gain from uh, the identifying driver deforestation in Cambodia in the past. Okay, this is just uh, show you an overall driver deforestation and forest degradation. It was 
uh, divided into uh, driver within forestry sector and driver outside forestry sector. And we classify it as direct driver and indirect drivers. Uh, as Jeremy mentioned earlier, that Cambodia, we are in the last stage of applying the, uh, we are in the primary stage of applying the tools, and we are in the first, we are right now, so I am working in the Cambodian and Plastic Criteriates, and we try to collect all information, all uh, policy related to driver, and we research, that we come up with the draft reports of the overall driver deforestation in Cambodia. But at this stage, we cannot quantify of driver, we just uh, prioritize driver that we need to address. So we are in the first step. Okay, what we learned from applying the tools, uh, Cambodia need it because uh, right now uh, in Asian regions, we have the tool that introduced by USAID LEAF program, and the tool is being tested in two countries as understood. One was Cambodia and the other one was the Philippines, I think. Okay, so uh, I am working with that. So uh, we, we, after applying the tool, we get some experience. And Cambodia need to have one tool that appropriate and fit to the national circumstance. It is not limited to follow the ASEAN tool, but it has to be like aligned with each other. And also in Cambodia, we have a limit data on dry road deforestation because some data has to be uh, reflected to different stakeholders, their view, and some drivers are very sensitive at the national level. Okay. Uh, what we learned from uh, the planning tool, the challenge was that I think it called us quite. Uh, right now, our driver of deforestation for the integration is very sensitive for different stakeholders. And uh, people, sometimes they view driver as negative, some people view driver as a positive way. So, unidentified or uncertainty to identify this view in effect to identify the driver at the national level. And also, um, it related to capacity uh, building of different stakeholders. While the national level, they understood more about driver, but the some national stakeholder might not understood well about red plus driver what it is. So we need more again on capacity and information sharing to, to ensure that national and subnational they are in the same page and understood driver in the same times. Okay. And um, key the other challenges was uh, coordinations uh, uh, mechanism. Right now we don't have any uh, national mechanism to collect or to manage data on deforestation, while at the same time, different stakeholders, they have their own data. Okay, last one. Uh, actually, fortunately, we have a, a, a good opportunity. We can improve these issues by, right now, we have Cambodian National Red Plus uh, Task Force. They will use as a platform and they will use as a mechanism to coordinate all different stakeholders to prioritize drivers that need to address. And while at the same time, we have a lot of programs from development partners provide both financial and technical support to improve the work on the driver in Cambodia. And last, uh, fortunately, in the past experience, we also have uh, uh, a rich experience on the driver of deforestation and degradation was identified. Okay, this is my last time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chun. Uh, I gave a little bit uh, more time because you are two of you so, <laughs> from Cambodia. Uh, next speaker will be Dr. Elizabeth Phillips from Malaysia. Uh, she is uh, the head of climate change and forestry program in Forest Research Institute of Malaysia, FRIM. Uh, so he, she is a very, very active in several occasion or event under UNFCCC uh, and political diversity policy. Uh, she will give a kind of presentation uh, dealing uh, with top-down approach on Red Plus implementation, Malaysian experience. Please do. Thank you, Pawaiti. Very good afternoon to all of you. Next, please. 
I will try to speak very fast. Uh, if you don't understand me, just stop me later on uh, along the corridors. Um, just to start off my presentation, basically I just want to give an idea how to be handled forestry in Malaysia. Um, land issues, whether it's natural resources or anything to do with land is at the state level administration. So the federal government uh, of Putrajaya basically manages and harmonizes the different activities and management of natural resources. But this is all guided by national councils. Some of these councils are through the, the um, constitution of our country where it's legally binding. So these are all the different uh, links that we have, which I've already put there. I think you can read in the interest of time. I have to go to the next slide. Next, please. Um, so um, based on that, the Red Plus will just fit into all those committees because we believe Red Plus is a holistic approach where we look at the environmental aspects, we look at the social aspects, we look at the economic aspects as well as the forestry, if you like, which is part of the environment and climate change. Um, Red Plus actions has already been incorporated into our 10th Malaysia plan. Ten, currently, we are under the 10th Malaysia Tenth development plan. So we are going to the 11th in two years' time. So it's already implemented into that. We also have the economic transformation program, which also talks about land sector issues, as well as in line with our sustainable development goals. Um, the Red Plus implementation is actually guided by the National Land Code, the National Forestry Act, Wildlife Act, and many, many other acts. I was just too lazy to put all of them down. Um, and we also have enough national policies to guide us. Theoretically, we don't need any other policies, but we still quick come up with a strategy. Next, please. Um, so, for us, Red Plus implementation actions are implemented at sub-national, whereas monitoring and um, the different reporting and verification will be done at national level. Again, for the safeguards, we we'll follow the same process. Next. Um, so, was it useful for us after close to three years? Uh, I also must say Malaysia don't have international funds. I envy my fellow colleagues in the ASEAN region. Um, it's all basically from national funds. Yes, we upscaled our best practices. For us, Red Plus is not something we started post Bali Action Plan, but since 1990s. Um, common challenges were addressed. addressed. We also built cross, um, we also built capacity building because one state may be more at once in certain areas, another state is better in another area, so we just fill our capacity accordingly. And because of this, there's greater awareness among the policy makers, and that helped us jumpstart our process. And next slide, please. I'm not going through all, yeah. Nothing is smooth and easy. We have our own challenges. Of course, managing expectation is something that's quite difficult. We also have methodological issues. We also have uh, some gaps in information, measurements, um, and also we have issues with funds. Um, how, how do we use these funds when funds are rather limited? How do we use these funds to get the maximum benefit? I think that's my last slide. Yeah. Uh, in conclusion, what, we want, we want, what I would like to say is the energy conditions for red class implementation is already available. Forest policy and governance issue has been addressed through our different legislation, both at federal and state level. We have some forest management, but it's not perfect. As you know, I don't think any country in the world has a perfect forest management system. We already have an MRE system that was done in the past, but now we have to scale up to include the other decisions that's required for Red Plus implementation. And finally, we also have a national forest monitoring system in place since 2000 and now we are also upscaling some of it to some regions that do not have this and you see the red safeguard information system is missing we have that and we are working with our colleagues from the biodiversity group to harmonize this together with that i thank you Thank you, you were Elizabeth. I think as you did a very sharp time. So the next speaker will be 
Arif Darmawan. He is a member of Red Plus special team under the Red Plus Agency of the Republic of Indonesia. He was also under the same thematic task force under President Delivery Unit for Monitoring and Oversight of we call UKP4 of Indonesia. He got uh, his PhD, Master and PhD from University of Tokyo, Japan, with special interest to in biomass estimation using remote uh, sensing. He is going to uh, present development of REL or RL for Red Plus in Indonesia. Approach, challenges, and lesson learned. Please, Pa Ari. Thank you very much, Pa Pawiti. <coughs> and uh, good afternoon for everybody. So I will I different from other speakers that most of them talk about OC. So I will speak about the um, technical aspect of uh, the Red Plus, which is the reference emission network. So, <coughs> Uh, yeah, uh, because it's only five minutes, so I will uh, also talk very fast. And if you don't understand what is, uh, I present to you, uh, so please uh, ask in the discussion. And uh, of course, as you know, that the reference emission level is uh, kind of the tools that we need to implement the red plus. So we know that there are two reference. The first is reference emission level, and the second is reference level. So, they are different, which uh, someone maybe say that, oh, it's not different, but for us, it's different. So, uh, reference level, meaning that we count the historical of emission, then uh, the reference level, meaning that we count the historical of emission and also the historical of removal. So, this is uh, two different uh, definitions from the reference itself. And then, uh, what is our position now, our uh, step to be taken for um, defining or starting the red class, uh, which is, uh, we, we all already stated that we are uh, moving from the readiness into transformation phase, meaning the reference emission level or reference level should be ready by the uh, end of this year. So, uh, next part. Ah, uh, this is our uh, step. So we are currently use the stepwise approach to define the reference level or reference emission level. So stepwise meaning we can choose which is the best and which is the which is the most appropriate from uh, to our condition now. Then uh, because we know that we have uh, uh, of course. Uh, our national circumstances and also data availability then uh, the, the Red Cross Agency uh, 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 maybe state that our current uh, development is about the reference emission level so we count the emission from 2000 to 2009 as you see this, the reference time is 2000 and 2009 this is what this is the year that we take because this is the data that available currently uh, within our uh, Ministry of Forestry and other source of data such as, such as INCAS. Uh, I will tell you later. And how we uh, set the reference emission level? We take the we we uh, we select uh, no, uh, yeah we select the data then we map the data. Then we make the reference emission level as average, uh, average of historical emission. So you can see the red line. So we start at 2014 and um, we we said that the MRV or the uh, directed uh, measurement will be taken annually. So as you see in the chart, this part. And how, how can we measure the deforestation? Uh, actually, I, I have 60 slides for uh, <laughs> um, explaining how we measure deforestation. But anyway, this is our data. So we have 2000 2011 actually. But uh, we choose the 2000 2009. Okay, thank you. Uh, then, next. Then this is the peak decomposition. So we take this uh, aspect as our reference level because peak. Um, contribute uh, 
um, very big ambition as uh, written in our national uh, second national communication. Uh, next part. And this is the fire. As you know, Indonesia have a big problem in fire. Uh, last year we have two big fire, especially in Riau and Jambi and some area in Sumatra. And we want to have this as our um, uh, performance as well, uh, as, uh, aside from the composition and deforestation. So how, how we measure the emission from the um, the fire. So this is our our uh, our methodology. Next part. And we define the process as uh, very you know um, bottom up and top down. So we are now developing the national uh, reference emission level because uh, we have um, a lesson learned in the province. So first we develop the uh, reference emission level in the central Kalimantan. We are uh, collaborating with uh, um, Forda and also INCAS. Then we can develop this and also the uh, Central Kalimantan MRPT. Please, Pak. Yeah. And this is the number. This is a working document, so you can you can see the number, but this is our working document, so maybe change a little bit. But uh, yeah, maybe the number is around this. So uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Ari. Uh, I think the next speaker will be. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yan Huang Fin from Vietnam. Please. <coughs> Uh, for 
สไตล์คุณฟอร์ฟรอนต์ทำเลนซิกทุกทำเชิงแทนสปอตไฟไม่คือคือส่วนส่วนคือส่วนส่วนตัวบอยไฟใบตัวบอยไฟมิดเตอร์ was used for for a mapping for a map was developed at square one to one to one hundred thousand and provincial level The digital image was uh, interfaced with the support uh, that imaging NV uh, made for XGIS and from 2012. Uh, Recording software to interpret the satellite image is being used. For forest quality, since 1991, a systematic sample law system has been set up in whole country, with the grid in 8 by 8 kilometer. Size of sample law is a uh, is uh, 100 hectare. Uh, in each sample law, 40 sample law with the size of, with the size 500 square meter. Uh, in 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 two line in two lines uh, was the table it for for uh, the what for the sorry uh, as a sub block uh, for that and for that and the related variable would be collected by and uh, identify and uh, based on by the for that high in some block would uh, see uh, regionalization uh, bamboo vegetation. Uh, soiling and social economic in various uh, um, sample words. Uh, for long term monitoring for that the kilometer to be assessed such as uh, species composition, uh, forest structure, forest uh, ground, and ec ecological status on and condition related for forest regeneration. The other for that ecological conditions such as land, vegetation, and social economic. And uh, less than that. For monitoring uh, for that area at the national level, satellite embed with different resolution and using automatic interpretation method as a applicable. The mounting of inventory should be considered but to, to, to apply, combine the satellite in the satellite image in the presentation and sample load. For monitoring for air quality, a sample load system with distance 8 by 8 km, uh, but only for Vietnamese, would be suitable. The set of, the set of sample load uh, should be the L set. And number of block uh, maybe should be should be reduced to for for decreasing cost. Uh, next step in Vietnam for monitoring of carbon stock uh, resulted to find out the converted factor to from forest volume to to carbon stock to take forest uh, should be uh, carried out for. For that, and then use a classification system would be harmonized uh, according to according to IPCC and FAI uh, FAI classification for for that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Muyan is an expert of forest inventory. He is uh, working for Vietnam Forest Inventory and Planning Institute and he did a presentation on the development of natural forest systems and FMS and or MRP system in Vietnam. Now I'd like to invite uh, the last speaker but not least. Uh, so we started with a lady and we are going to have a speaker is also a lady but not least. Please, Miss. Alaya, Alaya De Leon. She is a senior legal and policy specialist with the climate change and environment cluster of the Ateneo School of Government in the Philippines. 
just going to present developing safeguards and non-carbon benefits in Red Plus implementation in the Philippines. Please, Ayat. Thank you, Pat. Um, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Exciting. Um, so just to, a very quick overview of the Philippines. Um, as of 2010 data, the forest cover of the Philippines, uh, the percentage uh, compared to our land area is about 25.7%. So there's, in, just in terms of the forest cover, there's a very big uh, urgent need to uh, really increase efforts to uh, address the situation. Um, aside from that, there's um, uh, conditions that make uh, Red Plus an ideal activity to be engaged in, in the Philippines. So we have a very um, rights-based and community-based legal framework that's already existing in terms of indigenous peoples and community participation. Um, we also are one of the biodiversity hotspots, uh, top biodiversity hotspots in the world, so it's also uh, urgent to, to address uh, this issue. And also we see Red Plus as offering an opportunity to bolster good governance in the forestry sector. Um, so, like I said a while ago, we already have a very solid um, and comprehensive policy framework. Uh, so our constitution, our various laws in terms of environment and natural management, uh, sorry, natural resource management, um, indigenous people's rights, our forest policies, um, and even our local government code, they all contain uh, laws and policies that may be applicable to Red Plus. So the enabling policy framework is already existing. Um, we also have climate-specific laws and policies. We already have our Climate Change Act, an accompanying strategy and plan. And uh, we already have the Philippine National Red Plus Strategy. And uh, one, oh, since I'm talking about safeguards and non-carbon benefits, one unique aspect of our Red Plus Strategy is that it, uh, it came out before the Cancun safeguards were agreed on. So it came out in 2010 before the Cancun safeguards. Um, but uh, even without reference to the Cancun safeguards, the PNRPS, as we call the strategy, already has the foundational elements to enable us to carry out the development of safeguards and um, identification of non-carbon benefits. Uh, so this is just uh, kind of the timeline, and it just please click the last. Uh, oh, sorry, no, the last. There's another box there. Yes. So just this is a process that shows what the PNRPS went through. It was a very co collaborative and very stakeholder-driven um, process. Uh, from it was a one-year series of consultations and expert workshops, etc. Um, but it was very bottom-up and multi-stakeholder. And uh, if you read the PNRPS, it can it really shows how um, inclusive and participatory it is. And I'll go through some detail of the PNRPS in the next slides. So the impact areas, um, actually there's a very big emphasis not only on carbon, so we know Red Plus is a mitigation strategy um, as agreed in the UNFCCC, but our impact areas include poverty alleviation, biodiversity conservation, and even improved governance. So these are all things that are valued um, in the Philippines when we implement the Red Plus. Next slide, please. And we call it the uh, triple currency approach. So these are the seven components of the strategy. But uh, like I said, the, what it should amount to is not only the carbon results, but also community and biodiversity. So we call that the triple currency when we look at um, uh, how we can benefit as a country from Red Plus. We don't only look at the carbon benefit or the reduction of carbon emissions, but also the benefits to community, to our local communities and to biodiversity. Um, yeah, so this is just a summary that I pretty much already explained that, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, and also this is just a rundown of the initiatives on safeguards and non-carbon benefits. So these are not all the initiatives on Red Plus we have in the Philippines, or they don't all cover things related to safeguards and non-carbon benefits, but they do focus on safeguards and non-carbon benefits in various ways. So we have policy studies, we had a, an initial UN Red program um, uh, until last year, and now we also have uh, projects uh, focusing more specifically on safeguards and developing the safeguards information system. Um, and so the challenges that we have, um, the first is assessing and uh, analyzing institutional arrangements. So we know that we should be building on existing systems and, and, and arrangements, 
But before you build on them, you have to understand them, what are the gaps and the strengths, and um, tailor them accordingly to meet your Red Plus needs, and that, that can be very challenging. Also, uh, monitoring and evaluating safeguards implementation. So now we're just rolling out our project, uh, our initiative to develop our safeguard information system. And um, we, we know that it's a big task ahead, so we are gearing up for that in, in the next few years. And uh, of course, ensuring sustainability of financing, but I don't think that's uh, unique to the Philippines, as Ibulis mentioned earlier. Um, so lessons learned, just please, please click through all of them. Uh, I guess there are five main uh, lessons from the development of our safeguards and non-carbon benefits. Uh, first is that we really should look beyond carbon when we're talking about Red Plus because it really will ensure the long-term sustainability of your carbon results and also benefit um, other sectors, not only uh, in terms of mitigation. Um, and uh, it, it may involve some investment on, in, on the part of government, but it, it's, uh, it's a worthwhile and long-term investment. Um, civil society in the Philippines, we really proven that civil society participation can really have a big influence on the policy development and implementation uh, of Red Plus uh, safeguards and non-carbon benefits. Um, and like I said before, it's important to build on existing systems, especially at the local level, so that we can get buy-in from different stakeholders um, and avoid uh, multiplicity of efforts. And lastly, uh, safeguards offer a mitigation of uh, a risk mitigation approach. So, uh, and it should be communicated as such. It's not an additional burden. It's not an extra uh, layer of uh, things that you know you don't really need. It's really it will really help uh, countries mitigate the risks of implementing this, uh, Red Plus, and therefore it's a worthwhile investment. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have already uh, clear and uh, got the information from five different countries, out of ten different countries in ASEAN. Probably you also see that uh, what they presented actually is rather diverse from one country to another country. This is by design of ARKM. We are going to uh, inform you how ASEAN is actually work together on climate change and give some lesson learned with some emphasizing on each of the country. If you see, like uh, uh, yeah, what uh, just mentioned, is she is focused on safeguards. And then my co our colleague Chun and Jeremy in Cambodia talking about uh, driver of deforestation and decision support tools. And Dr. Phillips uh, talking about more on policy in Malaysian uh, experiences. And Mr. Muyak uh, talking about uh, forest monitoring systems and also inventory. And then last but not least, by Arif Darmawan from Indonesia is gave a lesson learned from Indonesia side. Uh, especially on REL and RL. This uh, topic actually are uh, required under Red Plus uh, infrastructure so far under the COP UNFCCC. So what we are doing in ASEAN is hopefully will be more focused and focused uh, uh, transforming also giving lesson learned from each other and then strengthening our position on, on implementation of Red Plus in ASEAN countries. So now it's time for you to give a kind of comments and suggestion or question or whatever. We still have a little bit ample time, around 30 minutes from question and answer. So I'd like to invite first five questions. Yes, one. Two, three, here, no? Suchitra, four, over there. No, if not, then I'll be back, yeah, in the middle. So please uh, introduce yourself and give a question for who, please. Thank you, my name is Yogi from uh, Indonesia. 
then uh, from the first three speakers, I think uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, both countries, Indonesia and Laos, have uh, kind of a similar uh, problem of uh, getting data, probably because of you know, either uh, it is classified or too sensitive. But I wonder how do you uh, overcome or you know, deal with uh, uh, such uh, difficulties? And the second one for um, um, Malaysian speaker, I don't remember. I mean, sorry. Uh, I, I know that the, you know Malaysia has uh, like a solid uh, policy configuration. So, and you have a single committee in uh, you know national level. But I wonder if uh, when it comes to uh, the need of uh, let's say a coordination among ministries and uh, also uh, the way to implement uh, you know, the program in uh, state level because I believe a uh, state uh, characteristic is different from. A province in our country. So, could you please uh, explain uh, for them? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, may, may I ask your institution? You? Yeah, I'm from, um, actually, I'm working for National Institute of Public Administration, but currently I'm a student. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The second question is Lady and Thank you. Second, uh, Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Rini Yuni Astuti. I'm from uh, Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, I would like to ask uh, speakers from Indonesia, uh, Bu Nur Masripati dan Pak Arif Darmawan. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, many red class initiatives have been done, and since uh, 2007, uh, red class instructions in Indonesia is very really strong. Uh, my question is, how far do you think? that Red Plus has changed uh, the forest governance in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Purini. You, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Blate, and I'm with the U.S. Forest Service. I'm based in Bangkok and the Regional Forest Advisor. Thank you so much to all the speakers and to you, Pak, for um, convening this session. Um, I'd like to just congratulate the, the Knowledge Network because it sounds like there, there has been progress. I'm quite curious about what the next steps are. Um, as we heard and you pointed out, there's quite a diversity of challenges and um, progress, shall we say, amongst the countries. And I imagine it would be quite challenging to, to, to be coherent, I guess. Um, but if the, the speakers could comment on, or, or you could comment on, what the specific next steps for ARK and FCC are to move the region toward um, greater progress with Red Plus, perhaps in the negotiations globally or, or just here in the region. Um, and if I may ask a very specific question uh, about the non-carbon benefits from our last speaker, um, to what extent is the network thinking about those, those non-carbon benefits and both the adaptation and the mitigation side? Thank you. And then, uh, uh, Dr. Suchitra from Thailand. Yeah, Suchitra, John Tengku, the National Power for Land and Conservation and the Coachate of Red Plus for the country. Thank you. I would like to congratulate our colleague from the uh, uh, ASEAN South Asia during the day. Really excellent presentation. But I would like to ask, some of me there first for the Indonesia that they since you have numbers island and you have different place you have different driver deforestation and you have different degree of the the problems how do you come up with the national different level if you have different degree of drivers some island may have the the some one Difference rate and another maybe you don't build really low difference rate. How to come up with the average one for the national different levels? And I come to the sixth question to the old colleague from Vietnam that they mentioned to come up with the conclusion the sample plot should be L shape. What the significance L shape from, from the other other shape and why you pick up that one? And the, the last one for colleague from Philippines. They you mentioned about the you come up with the safeguards rather significant even before they can cool and they I have heard that they your country developed national safeguard national red strategy. 
influenced by the by the uh, NGO and civil society, and that become normally in the beginning red pass is is challenge for different stakeholders. Some stakeholders even not don't like red pass, and why your country is very significant? That why red pass is, is the opportunity, and why the civil society come up and help government to develop national strategy is very 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 interesting for us to learn. and then the last uh, question. Okay, thank you for the opportunity given to me. I'm Steve Harrison. Uh, I'm Indonesia representative on Asia Youth Climate Network, AYCM. Um, my question is delivered to Ibu Nun as the director of uh, AIK. Um, my question is, uh, is there any specific mechanism in uh, ARKN to deal with uh, the factor of social engagement or community participation to achieve uh, the goals of uh, IEDD plus implementations in the, for, uh, in the regional framework? Thank you. Uh, now it's already five, so I'd like to give uh, time for presenters to give uh, response. Although not simply really for whom some of them giving a question, so I like to ask all of you to give comments or, or response for that kind of question. I think it's a very very good question. So uh, because who knows, seems to me that a lot of comments and questions uh, given to you. Please, Dr. Uh, thank you for all you did. Thank you, uh, colleague, uh, for the comments and uh, question. Uh, I think the question for uh, specific to Indonesia uh, will go to Pa Arif. I will just add uh, some. Um, I will address specific uh, question uh, for uh, ARNFCC. But uh, from Purini, there is uh, there was specific question to me. Uh, how far Red Plus has changed uh, forest governance? Um, as Indonesian, you know how difficult it was to bring uh, all sectors uh, together uh, to talk about the policy related to uh, land-based uh, sectors, um, talking about the spatial planning. So um, the way I see is Red Plus in Indonesia should be seen as no regret policy and action. So whatever we do on that, there is positive impact. We should see. And when it's the negative impact, we have to. And um, uh, uh, sorry, I, I couldn't get your name um, from the US Forest Service. Thank you uh, for your comments. And um, this is a good question because I didn't have time to uh, explain in the slide. So five minutes was gone. Um, the next step is um, at the international level we will continue to work uh, together uh, to express our position and interest and uh, so far uh, ASEAN uh, member states has been recognized as the group that, the, that are able to balance the extreme position right and left. So uh, this is uh, the thing that ASEAN uh, through and FCC negotiators, some are here, what we play at the international level. So we will continue that roles, balancing the position so that we could reach consensus uh, without forgetting that we go to negotiation is to take care of our national interest. That's at the international level. At the regional level, we will continue to work together now resources come through many different channels. Uh, we use also uh, one that go through ASEAN, for example, KCC go through ASEAN, and GIC also has bilateral co cooperation with individual AIS. What we will do in the future is uh, scale down from ASEAN level to national, 
and uh, scale up from national to regional and we work also uh, from regional to international so what uh, we will plan to do and so far we have done so and now um, I think uh, Rana National will go to Pak uh, Arif uh, from Sucitra. Um, I think it's not only yeah, it's just Pak Arif will, will answer. I should prepare myself to answer. Um, from youth, um, so far we have uh, had mechanisms in place to uh, address uh, the social engagement at the regional level as we know that a social engagement is very unique from one country to other countries. Um, uh, through this network, we will learn what are common in all regions so that we could uh, develop mechanisms that we could bring to regional level. Otherwise, we have to recognize the differences, diversity with this within us, and we will draw what lesson we could learn from each other. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bro. Uh, next uh, answer, Bro. Thank you, Pat. Um, okay, just to, to the two questions uh, related to my presentation, to what extent is the network thinking about non-carbon benefits? Actually, we uh, the last meeting of ARKN in February, March. March. Yes, just uh, recently we developed. Um, a submission of the network on non-carbon benefits and non-market-based approaches uh, because there was a call for submissions from the UNFCCC. So we do have, we've had um, some, ex uh, uh, to, to, uh, we've had extensive discussions on what we agree on as a network and I guess, uh, and, and um, I, I think my colleagues can add, but, but I think some of the highlights is that we think that um, countries should be able to define what their non-carbon benefits are because it, it can vary very widely from country to country and from uh, one community to the next. Um, and uh, in terms of adaptation and mitigation, I believe we did state in the submission that um, non-carbon benefits have uh, um, impacts, should have impacts in terms of both mitigation and adaptation. And I think it's now on the UNFCCC website if you'd like to read the whole thing. Uh, and to Suchitra's question, uh, why civil society uh, had this initiative? I, I think uh, partly it's that in general, the Philippines has a very strong civil society to begin with. So very involved um, in NGOs, academe in various aspects of uh, society and especially in the environment. Um, so the UN the UNFCCC is one uh, arena in which civil society has been engaged or they've been following since um, Bali. And when Red Plus became, uh, when, when the process to discuss Red Plus was launched in Bali, it was one of the areas that um, civil society really looked at and studied um, whether it can be uh, beneficial to engage in as a country. So uh, I, I don't think it was. Um, I guess I guess that's that's one characteristic that it was a strong civil society to begin with, and um, the government is also very open and willing to discuss and and to engage in multiple multi-stakeholder and participatory processes. So uh, the discussion and dialogue between the two um, was quite uh, open and successful. And I think that's carried through in the development uh, of the strategy and until today. Jeremy, have you had some comment or idea or message to you? Um, I think there was a, I think maybe the first question uh, about sensitivity, sensitivities in Indonesia and Cambodia, is that right? Okay, so um, I, th I think maybe uh, Chung can correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the sensitivities in Cambodia are about um, during the driver's uh, assessment and uh, addressing process are uh, identifying actors associated with uh, different drivers. So, uh, you know, the kind of naming names, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, and what we're doing there is, is trying to approach different actors uh, individually or through uh, 
uh, just not in an open forum and uh, considering how we can uh, basically appeal to uh, companies and private sector partners or uh, those involved with foreign direct investment to see uh, if there are ways in which uh, uh, objectives can be aligned. So as uh, uh, I think uh, in, the, in this morning's session there was discussion about how you know, the objectives of different sectors have to be aligned and uh, we're not trying to, uh, or I don't think anyone's trying to say that we should stop economic development or um, change the court, you know, just stop, stop everything in these tracks and cause lots of, lots of economic disruption so that so the challenge is uh, I think when addressing these sensitive issues is to try and get a, a custom, try and find some common ground so that we can address this issue of the trade-off between economic development and environmental sustainability. So I think that's some, some use there. Uh, I, I just want to add to what I'm here Actually, uh, in the table here at Pass Road Map, we already identified drivers as uh, I saw the invitation. But actually, the sensitive issues was that um, in the past experience, uh, different stakeholders they have different data on drivers. Even the government, we also have our own data, kind of your research NGO. The thing is that it, it hardly to harmonize each other, and um, it hardly to uh, make sure that the data is really uh, accurate. So this is one of the key challenges that we are working right now. We try to harmonize all the data of driver that reflect to the need of different stakeholders, both national and subnational events. Thank you, Professor. I will reserve it, please. Um, first of all, I'll answer the question that was directed to me, then I'll just add on to two other questions. I'll just give my comments. Um, on the question, how do we harmonize between Subnational and national implementation. Um, it is quite straightforward for us because before we do any any policy or action plan or even strategy, we need to have stakeholder consultation. So we do that. So from the stakeholder consultation, we develop our way forward, and then it's brought to the national um, land council meeting and the biodiversity council as well as the climate change council. So um, the Land Council is actually a legally binding council where whatever actions and whatever decision is made, the sub-nationals have to come up with regulation and implement them. So that's how we address uh, red plus or even any forestry issues. I hope um, I've answered your question. And um, Suchitra did ask about uh, um, uh, local communities and NGO participation. Actually, in my country where we don't have funds, we work very closely with uh, NGOs and local communities too. WWF was with us when we did our one and only UNDP readiness project. And then WWF was also helping out Sabah State Government in doing uh, the EU project. And also GEC this morning, you heard from Faisal, he didn't mention that, but he was also instrumental. So we have this, this uh, bridging process at, uh, in Malaysia. And the third question someone asked about um, what is the, uh, the, what we see this network would take us, what's the next action plan? Okay, so I think uh, this has been a very enriching network and one thing that I do see as uh, Ibu Noor and Aya has already mentioned, non-carbon benefits is national uh, agenda and we have 10 countries with 10 national agendas with different progress and different definition and understanding of non-carbon benefits. So I think we can learn from this process how each country handles the different aspects and then probably we could, we could build from there to come up with our own national agenda. I think that's something that will go on when the, um, the discussion on non-carbon benefits Progresses. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moyan, please. For the question about the why health sex uh, better more than other uh, sex, yeah. when we uh, supply design, um, supply design for sample growth, we use. Uh, 
is uh, a tool, uh, a tool. Uh, it's called the uh, simulation sampling design for 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 every for every for that area. Yeah. The first uh, the first step in we are we are build the forest, build the volume map, volume map. The uh, second you run the tool, you run tool on the volume map for predict the uh, predict the accuracy and cost for each uh, method. Each uh, each uh, method. Uh, so that um, up input uh, the input data of the tool is a set of some load. You can do input the L set and A set and data uh, set and square set, child uh, set, something like that. In, input the tool. Uh, after that, you input the distance of the distance between plots, between uh, between between uh, the plot. After that, you run the tool, the tool on the whole map. The output is an accurate, is an estimate accuracy and uh, estimate the code of X meter. Uh, I can, I only can sense the data that because uh, my mix is not good, so that I only can sense the outside. Thank you, sorry. Uh, about the first question about the problem of data, uh, actually we have uh, at least two, two problems. The first is technical and the second is non-technical. The, the technical problem is about the, the cloud. We cannot uh, remove in the cloud by ourselves, so we need to find a way to remove the cloud. So this is our technical problem of remote sensing in our country. In our country, and not in, <laughs> I don't know, in uh, uh, other countries. But in our country, it's very, very bad. So this is our first problem. So that's why we are proposing the annual reporting, not annual reporting for it. So that's why uh, I think two, uh, two years is, uh, you know, we have uh, ample time to have uh, good data. And second, the problem of data is non-technical, meaning that, of course, in other countries, it's, uh, have also the same similar problem, which is um, transparency of data and sharing of data is problem, you know. So, in our understanding, Red Plus is about uh, a way, a method to share data. Because we have um, data about mining, we have data about any, anything about, you know, plantation, we have forestry, we have you know, many energy, etc. So it's, it's about the land. We need to have good data about the land. So we, when we talk about the land, that many, not, not only forestry, not only agriculture, but many sectors is play, play on the ground, meaning that uh, this is our, uh, our, how can I say, our, uh, our way uh, to to improve the forest governance, uh, to answer the second question. So, did uh, Eric Plus already uh, change forest governance? Yes, of course, a little bit. Little bit, not little bit, but step by step. So, the moratorium map is one of, uh, I mean, the successful, um, how can I say, process, which uh, each sector is open to their data. So we have uh, Ministry of Forestry, we have Ministry of Agriculture, we have uh, Land Administration Agency, we have uh, Ministry of uh, Energy, they open the data. And we build the moratorium map. So this is our uh, well achievement as a country to, to build that map. Because we are talking, you know, in the previous time, we are not talking just work ourselves, Ministry of Forestry working, Ministry of Agriculture working, and it's, it's, it's very, uh, how can I say, it's very uh, uh, limited time to, to talk. So this is our, actually, uh, yeah, although it's still 
not saying that red plus is about carbon, but uh, on the forest governance is also the, the, the great achievement. And then, uh, how about the different driver and we have number of island? Yes, this is uh, actually our uh, um, issue in the country, in the country where uh, deforestation in central Kalimantan is different with deforestation in Aceh, for example, and in Papua. So that's why we build uh, what we call uh, province to national. So we are not doing the national as a national number, but we are doing the province by province um, uh, calculation. Then we are doing uh, consultation with the province. Then we are aggre aggregating into national numbers. So that's the that's the methodology. Thank you, uh, Arif. Uh, we still have five minutes left, so I like to give Bunur to add more on uh, Indonesia experience. Just one minute. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Pak Wahyudi. I will try. This is especially to respond to uh, Sri Chitra about the challenges in uh, developing reference emissions level as we are uh, uh, different drivers. I think the biggest challenge for Indonesia is forest area is about 70% of our country land area. We have about 250 million population and is expected to have close to 300 in 2030. Establishing res reference emissions level need, need to take into account of what Indonesia want to be in 2030 and this is not easy. So this is the biggest challenge uh, for us. Um, but half minutes uh, to go back to a decision support tool actually for Indonesia at the national level there is no sensitive uh, issue because there is national circumstances and sovereignty taken care in the decision support tool uh, so there is no sensitivity there becomes sensitive when we bring to regional level because we expect to use that at different level uh, regional, national and local level thank you Pak Thank you, Bunar. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, we just uh, half minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you very much for giving uh, this half minute. Uh, my name is Mahmood. I am a red focal point for government of Pakistan. Uh, we are looking at uh, your experiences and learning lessons from what you are doing. And one particular question uh, I want to ask, especially in Indonesia and uh, Cambodia. Uh, have you developed some protocols or systems for uh, uh, sub-national level financing by private entrepreneurs? Because we hear that they have worked with you and some are also contacting us and we don't know if to tell them no or we should tell them yes. Welcome and how have you developed some protocols? We want to share and uh, get uh, your uh, experience. Thank you, Mr. Mawad. Thank you. Uh, this is easy question but difficult to, to answer. Um, at the moment, we haven't uh, had a formal mechanism uh, in place. What we have is trying uh, to have dialogue or to develop a uh, mechanism and as mechanism need to go through the dialogue and, uh, before uh, it is decided. So, uh, if you ask, we, we don't have uh, that uh, formal mechanism, but uh, under the uh, forest investment uh, program, we will exercise that at the uh, local level, but it's not static. Thank you, Bunar. Uh, sorry, everybody, it's time is uh, almost uh, finished. I like to, I don't want to give a summary of the discussion, but I like to give an emphasis that what ASEAN countries are working actually to have a good network, to work together, to have a uh, exchange lesson learned for REP Plus. And hopefully in the near future, ASEAN countries will have a very solid uh, commitment and working as Bunur mentioned, 
working in uh, COP or UNFCDC uh, event to help in balance between black and right wings uh, group. That's what I think is ASEAN countries uh, like to do. So. The last thing I like also to emphasize here, uh, to me, Red Plus is the biggest opportunity for us in tropical countries to save the remaining natural forests. That's I think is I like to highlight what we are doing in Red Plus. Again, thank you very much for your attention and.